them view. You do? Yes. You're my best view. Yeah. I'm You're so view. sweet. Good morning, sweet world, and welcome to the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network. It's Wednesday, May 5th. I'm J.E. Skeets, along with my top shot hot boy, Trey Kirby. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. The international man of mystery is taking it to the max. You all right, Lee? Nah, no, I'm not. I, <laughs> I missed the AO. That hasn't happened yeah. before. <laughs> What's going on? That was very weird. I didn't know if you were muted or not. And uh, yeah. last but not least, making the magic happen, it's J.D. Hello. There he is. Here we are. Off to a great start. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, we're a little late too getting started here because we fell down a a deep, I guess, uh, shack <laughs> booger hole. People were tweeting or I guess commenting in the stream team that we were going to talk ten minutes about Shaq's big booger last night. We were all like, "What? I didn't even see this." So then, of course, we're looking up the video. Yeah, Shaq had a giant booger last night. <laughs> Yeah, we went up the nostril hole. It was a long <laughs> way, Skeets. And so, yeah, we're giving you a sweet 10 minutes here, uh, right off the top, talking boogers. Yeah. Do you tell someone when they've got the booger, or do you just hope someone else tells them? No, you know? you 100%. On TV, you should no, absolutely. No, I'm saying in, in, a, in a social situation, if it was one of your friends and they got the obvious booger, do you say, hey, oh, you got yeah. a booger? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. so I you don't, obviously. You just let them dangle? Well, it, it just it, sometimes you do, and just sometimes it's like, uh, you know, like if there's someone's talking and it's like, how do you go about this? Do you sort of just slyly go up to them and just tap them and say, quick, you got a booger? Or do you just say, whoa, 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 like my friend Louis? who I still remember to this day one day I was in that situation and, and I'm talking away and Louis just goes, Ellis, you've got one huge booger right now. Yeah, there. <laughs> and you got your hankies and your cleanies always hanging out of pockets yeah. anyway. Uh, it just ch it ends that topic immediately though and everyone starts talking about the booger. So uh, well, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And that seems to be what happened on TNT last yeah. night yes. as well because you had uh, they just kept showing uh, the clips of Dwayne Wade kind of going like this, you know, just mm. wiping out his nose, trying yeah. Trying to send uh, the message to Shaq, but eventually you just got to come out and say it. There's a booger in your nose, and then <laughs> Go you're talking it. about boogers for five minutes. It's unavoidable, like you're saying, Lee. That's the only thing you're allowed to talk to as soon as the word booger is mentioned. <laughs> yeah, boogers, man. Crazy, aren't they? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> just growing in our noses. Yeah. Shout out to the stream team joining us live right now on YouTube. Smash that like button. Leave your comments. Leave your boogers below uh, in the YouTube comments. And uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hey, for all you podcast Apple listeners too, don't forget to drop a rating and a review to help us with the rankings. It's Five Star Friday on this week's Drop Podcast. Mm, indeed uh, it is. So you might possibly get name dropped by Trey Kirby there in the Five Star Friday segment on the drop so please do that and shout out to all our podcast listeners you know we're always showing love recently to the youtube people but yeah our diehards listen to the podcast well i was gonna say we see you but we absolutely don't but we hear you or you hear us god this is a weird one already isn't it email us your questions and comments for the next beach step and podcast no dunks at the .com. we're gonna hit the beach later today to answer your yeah. questions yeah it's wednesday so join us live at 3 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, and we uh, obviously flip that around into a podcast as soon as we possibly can. So beach step in later today. And finally, grab your No Dunks merch, like this beauty shirt mm -hmm. I got. I love the purple right there. Boom. Uh, over at nodunks.com. Okay. Let's get into the games. We'll play a little Is This News later, and we got a weird tweet of the night exchange uh, involving me and Kevin Durant. <laughs> but games, Lily, get us started. Are you ready to talk? Are you okay, I'm ready, Lee? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Lee, you got a huge boo guy. Oh, yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, with, the, with the mustache as well now, they get stuck in that as well. So, mm, well that's, that, is, that is true. <laughs> um, the Bucks rallied in the fourth to beat the Nets. Again, 124-118. They've clinched a playoff spot, and this is obviously a big win in terms of tiebreakers. But what did you see from this one, Lee? Milwaukee, uh, again, getting the best of Brooklyn down the stretch. No James Harden, but yeah. another good victory. Yeah, but if you've got Kevin Durant, you're, there's no hollow victory there from the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, he was out there. He was playing hard, and so was Kyrie Irving. And we've seen this season, it is hard in this sort of baseball-style format to win two games in a row against the same team. But the Bucks did that last night to... Uh, clinch the series. And this is huge in terms of the standings because it looks more and more like these two teams will meet in that second round of the playoffs, assuming everyone wins out as they should. 
And the uh, Bucks are still a game and a half back of the Nets, so they can still grab it. I mean, you'd still think the Nets probably get it from here. But I think psychologically it's important as well here for Milwaukee to be like, hey, we can run with these guys. Again, no James Harden, sure, but we, they had to win the game last night. It wasn't as though Steve Nash decided to rest his players or anything. And I think that fourth quarter was key because – the one weakness the Nets have is that, you know, they don't love playing defense. They don't want to have to play. They want to just outscore teams. And in that fourth quarter, trailing by this by six points, the Bucks really decided to attack the paint. Middleton, Holiday, Giannis, DiVincenzo all scored high percentage looks. And if you look at their uh, shot chart from that fourth quarter, only two shots made from outside the paint. One was a three and then one was a long two from, uh, from Chris Middleton. So for me, I think what was really key here is the Bucks are like, we have to keep putting pressure on these guys defensively. And that's what they did, uh, again, in the critical moment of that game where it looked like maybe the Nets are just going to start to open the gap up a little bit here. Giannis sat for a minute. They didn't lose uh, too much ground. He comes back out there and he led the way. Now, he hit uh, another four threes last night, but he took 12. So the Nets are kind of like, we'll let you have that. He had a good game. Didn't have a huge, I mean, he didn't have a huge game by his standards. Yeah. Uh, but he got a lot of contribution. Holiday again, Middleton, DiVincenzo. Guys contributed. So, impressive back-to-back uh, -back wins here from the Milwaukee Bucks. Looking bigger picture, I think they can take some things out of this that uh, that they know come playoff time they're going to have to try to exploit if they are going to beat the uh, uh, the Nets in a series. I would still take the Nets in a series today for a couple of reasons, but uh, I, I feel that it wouldn't be a sweep or anything like that. I think the Bucks have got at least a game plan and they have got the tools uh, to at least make it competitive here and uh, put, the, put the Nets under pressure. Yeah, the Bucks were down 103.97 with about 10 minutes to go. And then they responded with an 18 to one run TK and obviously changed the game around and held on the end. KD had some good looks at some three pointers uh, that just did drop. It would have made it like a, a two point game or something like that. It wouldn't have been very, very close, but I thought Dante DiVincenzo was awesome for the book. I was everywhere last night. And then Lee said it. Middleton was the closer in this one uh, going six for six, I believe there in the fourth quarter. Six for six in the fourth. And like you're mentioning, Dante DiVincenzo, four offensive rebounds. I thought he was also pretty good as a cutter as well, just finding ways to make an impact while being, you know, maybe the fourth option at best uh, yeah. for that Bucks team. That 18 to one run in the fourth, that was massive. It, it, game was teetering. Felt like the Nets had a chance to really take hold of things. But then uh, Middleton and Drew Holiday working together, I thought was nice because with Drew Holiday being such a solid ball handler, such a solid playmaker, uh, Middleton doesn't always have to attack the defense head on. Sometimes he gets a bent defense, and in that scenario, you got an all-star going against maybe the third best defender on the Nets team. That's easy money right there. You got to love it. Love the truth-telling after the game as well. Steve Nash, I thought, was pretty honest. He said they were overall more physical than us on both ends. That was 100% true. A 55-29 to 29 rebound advantage for the Bucks also outscored the Nets in the paint 44 to 30 that is a clear point in favor for the Bucks like Lee's saying they should be able to crush Brooklyn inside and you can see that that was obviously the game plan with Giannis shooting the ball quite a bit like you said Skeets 12 threes but he also took 12 free throws if you're making 11 of those and you're making four threes that ends up being all right there is certainly uh, hay to be made for the Bucks inside uh, against the Nets I also like what Nash said We've got a gap to make up here regarding continuity. We understand that the Bucs are a team that's been running the same offense, been playing together, same schemes on defense for years now. This has been a question everybody has been asking about the Brooklyn Nets. Have they played enough games together with their big three to get things going right in the playoffs? Even Steve Nash is saying, I don't know. You know, everybody's saying you don't need to be worried about it. Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden are three of the best in the game at being able to just roll out the ball and go out there and get a win, and that's certainly true. But even Steve Nash is saying, I don't know. This is a little bit on my mind, and I'm guessing that's because it's got to feel a little bit like Suns versus Spurs for him. You've got the Spurs, an established team who crushes it inside. Meanwhile, the Suns are an offensive first team, just like the Nets are, and they're trying to take down a team that's already – been there and done a little bit of stuff together and i also thought Giannis was telling the truth when he said yeah this was great nobody will care if i don't no. do it in the playoffs yeah. uh so yeah i mean this was um a fun game a fun playoff preview and i think it's going to look a lot like this in game one of this series assuming they meet in uh the second round you know the nets are going to give jumpers to Giannis to start off with if he's making them that's going to be a problem for the nets and they still got to find a way to keep them off the line but Giannis has to do it in the playoffs or else nobody's going to care about your win on May 4th. Yeah, as everybody knows, I got this bet going with Tass. 
hundred dollars on the line. So a decent little bet here. He has the Nets go into the finals, and this bet was made when they acquired James Harden. I said, I don't know. You know, it's weird to uh, just slap together a super team and go right to the finals right away. So I took the field. I will say, if the if Tass is going to come through with this hundred dollars from me, he's going to have to earn it. I mean, the Nets are because I am prayingly praying that even if the Nets stay in the second seed, that let's say the Heat fall into the play-in, but play that play win that game and they're the seventh seed. I want the Nets have to go through the the Heat in a first round. Okay, sure. You know, it's still a good Miami team, of course. Tough. But yeah. I think most people would have the Nets going on. Then I want them to play the Bucs in the second round. Because as we've seen, <laughs> yeah, no, no Harden. But obviously the Bucs are a great team, have a lot of things to prove. That continuity could be huge. And then maybe the Sixers there in the conference finals. I want to make it difficult. If Tass is going to take $100 from me, I want it to be difficult. So, yeah, we'll and see. that's, uh, you know, that's plausible what you say there. I mean, the Heat, you know, are going to be tough. No Jimmy yeah. Butler last night, but just like they were last season, what they finished fifth, I think, and, and made it all the way to the NBA finals. Yeah. So, you know, they are going to make the, the Nets work. The Nets, I guess, would be favored in that series. But uh, I just think that, you know, if you're looking at the Bucks last night, again, you, you just want to say, we played a, a really good team and we played them really, really well in two tough games that we had to sort of win these games. Like I was saying earlier, there wasn't any like resting of players other than obviously Harden who's injured, but the Nets were trying to win these games because they want home court advantage and yeah. if they can, they want to overtake the Philadelphia 76ers. So, you know, the Nets were trying to win these games. There, were, there was nothing about it here that Milwaukee did that wasn't uh, in some way, you know, a, a, a an underscored victory or anything like that. They had to play hard and they did. And uh, Giannis led the way, but it wasn't just Giannis. They got contributions from everybody and that's what they're going to need. And uh, Mikey Budenholzer, he's a very, he's a tough Did you say Boogerholzer? <laughs> he's a very stressed guy on the sideline. He, he hangs off every single basket and every single play. But uh, listen, he got the job done over uh, the last three days. So good for him. All right, our next game. Lonzo Ball, bounce back with 33 points, TK. Pelicans, Top the Warriors 108 103. They are holding on by a thread here with their chances to try and get into this play in tournament. Uh, what'd you take away from this one? That's right, Ski. Just a night after nearly finishing with negative hero points, almost becoming a super villain, Lonzo Ball pulled a Loki and became a good guy. 33 on the night, seven threes, a step back jumper with 25 seconds left. Really tough shot. Uh, put the Pelicans up, and Lee, you gotta love it. 4-4 four, four from the free throw line mm -hmm. in the last 15 seconds to ice things for the Pelicans. Obviously, this came just a day after going 3 of 18 in a loss to the Warriors as well. Apparently, Lonzo texted Zion after losing that first game saying, I'll be better during the second go around. He was true to his word, which is not something you can always count on from Loki. But just when you thought the play-in race was over, the Pelicans pull off a really nice win, keep things interesting. They're two games back of the Spurs right now. The Spurs got a tough schedule here. They've got the Jazz, the Bucks, the Nets, the Knicks, and the Suns twice. Plus, you can throw in a Blazers game. I think they got one more as well. The, the Pelicans, meanwhile, have all playoff teams left on their schedule, too. It's going to be tight going down the stretch here. It definitely felt like uh, this could have gone the other way and we could be done with uh, the play-in races. But I don't know. Still a little bit of intrigue. Uh, left here during the last couple weeks of the season. Yeah. Do you think the Pelicans can do it, Lily, especially with the Spurs? Uh, because I think the Warriors sort of did their part here with the uh, at least the split from these two. I believe they do have one more, right? Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, that's like they have the tiebreaker, so that's in their advantage. But maybe it is the Spurs if there is uh, one of these teams in the West that falls out and the Pelicans have a chance. But you're not loving you're, – you're, you're making a grimace over there. Uh, it, ju it just feels like they've got a – be almost perfect down the stretch here the pelicans uh to overcome and again and it, I, I say an experienced team i mean really that spurs team outside of like DeRozan and patty mills there's not a ton already gay of course is there as well there's not a ton of like sort of spurs traditional uh veterans on that team but it just feels i, I would certainly rather be in the spurs position than the the pelicans but they do have as trey mentioned they're a really tough schedule we've got the jazz again then they've got the suns to close out but it could come down to again those last two games and if teams do potentially rest one or two of those players uh, and, and you know, once they've locked up their position, if that's the case, because the Suns and the Jazz will probably be battling to the end anyway for that number one spot. So maybe that will actually help the Pelicans because the Suns will play their players. But uh, it was a very impressive win because, again, the, the, the Warriors were in control of this game almost to the, down to that last minute. 
uh, and then the and then the uh, Pelicans pulled it out, and Lonzo stepped up when the when I think it was Wiggins hit a three, he came down, hit another one. Steph hit one, and Lonzo stepped into it with confidence. He didn't shy away from it, so that was really important. But uh, I should have brought this up with Seth yesterday. I was I was looking at it the other day. We might be facing history here, guys. Okay. Stephen Curry is likely at this point to end the season as the league's leading scorer. If he does. He's on pace to be the first guy ever to lead the league in scoring with more threes made than twos made. Mm. Believe that or not. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Back when he led the league in 2015, 2016, he had 402 threes. He had 403 twos. Oh, wow. Did it by one. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, I looked at James Harden, and it, but he had so many layups and stuff like that. So he yeah. didn't actually have more threes. But yeah, Steph Curry, he was up 12. I think he's up now. What is he up to? Uh, He's 15 more threes made than twos on the season at this point. So Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it's looking likely. It's looking very likely. I think he's about a point and a half up on Bradley Beal on the average too. But, uh, but again, the, I, I expect that he'll play every game pretty much from here out as well. So I think he's going to do it. We're going to see more history. History just keeps on happening. Look at you. Are you going on uh, Nerder She Wrote uh, later this week? <laughs> With all well, these analytics funny. that you got? It's funny because I was looking around casually yesterday. I think I wonder if anyone has addressed this yet, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So uh, looking around casually, yeah, you know, you just sort of casually looking on Google and just lean back. Yeah, well, it, it's it's a pretty unique stat, isn't it? I mean, when you think about <laughs> yeah. it, like uh, for a guy to have had more threes made and average as many as he does, I mean, it's Steph, so it's not a surprise. But yeah. um, I would have thought uh, if anyone, maybe Harden did it. But then again, you know, Harden hit a ton of threes, but he had so many other ways of scoring as well. Yeah, probably at the free throw line, a lot of those were coming exactly, too. Exactly, yeah. He was living there, especially that season there. Okay, that's great. Great stat there, Lily. Uh, well, let's keep uh, talking about the three ball. I'm one of my guys hitting a lot of them last <laughs> night. Tim Hardaway Jr. made 10 three-pointers last night. <laughs> my guy, THJ, another junior. It's junior month. For, forget week. It's junior month here. Uh, the Mavs rolled past the Heat, who had no Jimmy Butler. But 127-113 was the final score. I will say, I'm always saying Tim Hardaway Jr. is one of these days going to go for 50. He already had 42. Uh, was that just last week uh, that he popped off for yeah. that? Was yeah. it the weekend, maybe? Um, and now he goes for 10 three-pointers made, but he only scored 36 <laughs> points. This is my one concern. <laughs> my guy hit 10 threes, and he's not even really close to sniffing 50 points, which is weird. But he shot 13 and 24 from the field and 10 of 18. 18 three-point attempts uh, there from, from distance. Trivia question. Let's throw it at everybody here. He tied the Mavericks record for threes made in a game with 10. Timmy did. Who did he tie? Which two uh, former Mavericks players have also hit 10 threes in a game? Dirk? Yeah. No, not Dirk. Hubert no. Davis. No, not Hubert. Uh, I'll give Antoine you Walker? No, take, take it to the shortened three-point line season. George uh, McLeod? Yeah. George McLeod. <laughs> nice. That's where we all nice. put our photos. Uh, yeah. And one more. <laughs> Surprising. I don't remember this happening, but Tass Jason. must have been on the moon when it did. Tass must have been. Tass must have Yes, Tass loves this guy. Wes Matthews. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he made 10 threes yep. for the Mavericks. I don't remember that. It happened in, uh, in 2015, apparently. So, yeah. Anyway, Tim coming through. Uh, he is he is honestly fun as hell to watch when he's on and this guy catches fire like he is just he's lights out when he's in the zone i will say too though your guy your aussie rookie josh green lee uh rick carlisle was talking him up after the game he said he was like the real difference maker he played the entire second quarter and the Mavs were down and carlisle was crediting the, the rookie's energy there that he brought for this turnaround so you know they outscored miami 33 to 15 in that second quarter he was like crashing the boards yeah hitting the floor had, had a couple beautiful um like assists to the corner for three-point shots where he was driving baseline and and making some nice you know sort of skip passes or chucking it over the defense there so he, he you know he's i don't know we'll see if he uh, can get a little bit more time here but yeah. Bring, he's, that's what he's got to worry about, just all these li the little things, right? Stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, if you look at his box score, only four points and four rebounds, but he yeah. did have a, more of an impact. And he finished plus 17 uh, in his minute. So I think he could see that he was out there just trying to earn that respect from the coach. And that's right. Yeah. If, he, if he goes out there and plays hard like that, He's definitely going to get more opportunity, but uh, you know he's low in the pecking order. I think he's been down in the uh, in, in the G League team there as well. I yeah, think at points this season. Um, so you know it's tough for a rookie to come in and break there, but uh, yeah, work hard and you'll get your opportunity. Yeah, I saw Josh Bow um, at Bowman fifty five on Twitter pointing out that the Mavericks' best lineup 
it was Luca, Tim Hardaway Jr., Josh Green, Dorian Finney-Smith, and Dwight Powell. At uh, 12 minutes, they scored 38 points. They uh, you know, outscored the Heat by 18. They did everything. They were hitting the threes, of course. A lot of that was Tim Hardaway Jr. and, and Luca, but then four steals and three blocks. I, I love that lineup just in the sense that it's like, it's Luca. He's the show. Tim Hardaway is like the, the flamethrower. And then it's these like gritty guys that are doing like all the dirty things and Finney Smith and then Josh Green now. And of course, Dwight Powell even too. So uh, yeah, did well against the Heat again. Mavericks, Trey have moved up to fifth spot in, in the Western Conference as we keep our <laughs> eyes on that five, six, seven race uh, specifically. Never wavered, man. I always thought it was going to be the Mavericks getting out of that play-in <laughs> spot. It all comes down to making threes for them. If Tim Hardaway yeah. is going to hit 10 in the game, they're going to look incredible. If he's going to go, you know, two for 12, then they're not going to look as good because if you're able to start a Mavericks recap by talking about two players before you even get to Luka, okay. that is huge for the Mavericks because Luka is going to be there. He's going to perform almost every single night. Uh, it's just a matter of the role players stepping up. And the biggest way that they can help for the most part is making the threes that they get off these wide open passes from the donk. All right. The final games from last night, I'll throw them all at you, Trey, and you can go wherever you want. We had Devin Booker scoring 31 as the Suns dominated overtime to beat the Cavs 134 to 118. It was an overtime game. We got garbage time in overtime. We don't see that often. Uh, LaMelo Ball had a big fourth quarter. Good night for the Ball brothers uh, to help the Hornets escape Detroit with a victory. Buddy Heald, 18 points, 11 boards for Buddy Heald uh, to help the Kings top the Thunder, 103.99. I'm not sure many of you out there were watching that one. And then one I did watch, I stayed up late, the Clippers rallied to beat the Raptors 105-100. Uh, ended the Clippers three-game skid, but uh, obviously not helping the Raptors' chances of getting into the play-in tournament. I think Fred Van Vliet after the game said, we're the best worst team of all time or something <laughs> along the lines. Uh, it's what we've been saying all season long. I think there's some truth to it, but that was a tough one. But where do you want to go, Trey? Well, Skeets, you sort of mentioned it. As Sports Center Snapchat said, Big night for both balls. Mm. <laughs> 23 and 6 for LaMelo last night. And highlights galore. The big one this time was a Magic Johnson bullet pass to a McDaniels for a dunk underneath. He had another sick dime to a Zeller for a dunk underneath. The guy plays with such functional flair. You know, all of his highlights, I feel like, seem necessary. Lee, you were talking about that crazy switch hand layup he had uh, a night ago. And that it's like he's weaving around the defense to do it. It's not just pure highlight. It's like it felt completely in the flow of the yeah. game. And that's mm -hmm. just exactly how he's playing. LaMelo went for 11 in the fourth quarter, hit a couple of clutch threes, hit a 15-foot floater that was massive. It was certainly a big night for both balls. The only other note I've got from this is uh, Serge Ibaka rocking the leather man inspector gadget fit i think grant hill called him darth vader at one point <laughs> quite the look quite the look for serge <laughs> with the black mask as well and the bucket hat i don't know i would love to see if his arms are uh, you know made of metal and very stretchy i think it's more it's looking like, like uh, kylo ren uh, maybe jd sure. can uh, weigh in on that one a bit more but uh you know, I mean, Darth obviously with the with the mask and the stuff on the front of the big cape, but Kylo was a little bit more um, tight, wasn't he? JD's was a little, right? a little more buttoned up, I, I think. Yeah. Uh, but okay. uh, I think it's a perfect combination of the two, really. I mean, right? <laughs> uh, no, you know what? I think uh, this is a little more Kylo Ren. Kylo oh, this Ren is gonna, a, this has got a, a real Matrix fit. vibe to me. Yeah, though. that too. That too. Yeah. Yeah, you'd never see Neo. a bucket hat on the Matrix, though. Let's let's be honest. No, no, I'm obviously <laughs> talking about the uh, yeah the trench coat there or whatever. Yeah, that's uh, wow. Can you go? Can they go back and like digitally put a bucket hat on uh, the on one? Neo? Yeah, Neo? yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to watch that again. The one um, thing the Matrix was missing was a bucket hat. Yeah. Hey, with Matrix Four is coming out, maybe they. Uh... <laughs> They've oh, added big a, a bucket hat. <laughs> That'd be cool, man. Uh, yeah, that was a tough loss, too, there for the Raps. Again, they're probably out of it. And uh, oh, I don't know if you guys saw Siakam um, on the fast break. A little out of control. This is very late. They needed a score. I thought he had Kem Birch open. Kem Birch has good hands. Hey, he's not Aaron Baines. You know, he's not Len <laughs> Siakam. I know you're a little jaded with some of the centers yeah. you've had to play with this year, but you can throw him the ball. On the fast break, he might be able to catch it and finish. And uh, instead, Siakam, like, oh, just sort of had his head down. And he just, like, he looked just so out of control at times with that herky-jerky sort of dribbling style that he has. And 
I think it was um, I think it was Paul George that ended up taking the charge. It, it was bang bang. He was moving a little bit, but Siakam was not helped by just again. He just appears to be out of control. So it's like, uh, yeah, that's going to get called a charge. That was that was a tough tough play there. I don't know if you were up lately watching that one or caught the highlights. Uh, I think you know I wasn't up watching that one later. No, on the <laughs> no, no, you weren't. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's been uh, honestly the Raptors just to, they need this season just to end and, and God. get ready. You yes. Know. <laughs> It's uh, yep. because I, I mean, you know, Aaron Baines, I, I honestly thought this is a great signing for the Raptors. Uh, it just hasn't worked out for them, but they just, their, their season's never really been able to get going, you know, and um, I mean, Pascal and Nick Nurse got into it as well a couple of times. Freddie's been pretty good for them, but uh, ah, it's just, it's just some, you're just looking for that one little uh, glimmer of hope and it just really hasn't been there for the Raptors at all, I don't think. So no. end this season and uh Look forward to next season. They'll be back. The Raptors will be back. <laughs> oh, wow. I can't wait till I get to come on the podcast and say the Raptors are back next season. I look forward to that. Screaming that uh, at all of you. Yeah. Okay. So those are the games. Um, we're going to get into, though, a little Is This News? Is this news? Throwing some headlines at you guys and to everybody in the stream team, everybody listening. And, uh, well, you tell me not tell me whether or not they're newsworthy. The first one is from Woj ESPN sources. Nate Bjorkren's future with the Indiana Pacers uncertain due to issues with players and staff. This came out of nowhere last night, TK. But uh, is this news that Nate uh, Bjorkren might be on the hot seat there in Indiana? Of course this is news. We've got an NBA coach on the hot seat because of Big Beef. <laughs> you think I'm joking, but if you only watched Big Beef rebound highlights, you would have seen a Pacers team getting beefed up on the regular. The last three 20 rebound games have come against the Pacers, six of the last 10, all of them since April. But like a lot of people, this is a little odd to me. Pacers were hot at the start of the season. They really struggled. Uh, right as the year turned over to 2021. They've been pretty much a 500 team since then. 30 and 34 on the season, which is maybe a disappointment because the Pacers haven't been under 500 since 2015. That's the season Paul George missed most of the year with a broken leg. Just like that year, injuries have been a problem for the Pacers this year. TJ Warren has missed all but four games. Miles Turner has played one of the last 15 games. Karis LeVert missed half the season after his health scare. Jeremy Lamb came into the season hurt. Missed the first half of the season. Brogdon and Sabonis, those guys have even missed time. Just eight and nine games respectively. But that's about 15% of this season. Plus, they've got all these other injuries. Their most reliable players for the Pacers this year have been TJ McConnell, Justin, and Aaron Holiday from a games played perspective. And that, to me, sounds like a team that would be under 500. But obviously, it's a little bit more like that, uh, more than that. Because some of the words you're hearing in these reports are that Bjorkren is controlling or yep. abrasive or over communicative, which really <laughs> just seems like Nate Bjorken is kind of getting on everybody's nerves. And unfortunately for him, that's a little bit of part of this job too. Something that's probably different. If you're a head coach compared to an assistant coach, we see a team that's struggling to stay afloat during a tough injury season. Internally, the tensions have got to be even higher. You're throwing a new voice who's rubbing people the wrong way. And there can certainly be problems. There've been a lot of, you know, random one-year head coaches uh, in the history of the NBA. So it's not a total surprise, but it definitely came out of nowhere. Yeah, Lee, what do you think about this? Yeah, well, I feel a little bad for him because they have had injuries, but everyone has had to deal with injuries. They got off to a good start, six and two, and it was kind of like, here we go again with the Pacers. It's almost like the, the Grizzlies when they would just replace their coach and they just like, the guys know each other so well, they just go out there and perform and sneakily uh, get all these wins. But the wheels really have fallen off in the last month or so. Again, you're missing a lot of players due to injury, so it's tough. But uh, it just feels as though uh, things are different there in uh, Indiana this season than they have been in, in seasons gone by where they just can't they, – they've been getting blown out by teams as well at home, uh, which is which is a bad sign. So uh, it sounds like he – I don't know if he survives. He's only really got one guaranteed year left on that contract, so he might, uh, he might be out the door. But tough situation for him to come into there. Injuries, of course, happen to everybody, but uh, if he's sort of getting on everyone's nerves in the entire organization, uh, it might not be uh, a long stint there for him. So the Pacers, uh, Zilla sort of summed it up well this morning. He said their disastrous season has uh, been sneakily going under the radar, but uh, not anymore. So yeah, I think yeah. that's a good way of, uh, of summing it up. 
Yeah, look, too, this is Woj reporting this. You know there's some truth to this, whoever he's talked to in the organization. And, uh, like, the Pacers beat reporters are backing this up. I saw Jay Michael of the Indy Star. He wrote that uh, Bjorkren can be too much of a micromanager. And, again, controlling, there's that word, TK. I guess Brogdon and Sabonis have had his ear. Uh, I saw somebody in the stream team saying that Sabonis was seen yelling at Bjorkren and probably had a frustration way back in uh, January there. So, this is sort of a first year coaching thing. You got to learn your way, but it is a lot about relationships. And I'd be worried that he'll be there because this feels to me pretty similar to what happened to Lloyd Pierce uh, with the Hawks. I mean, you start losing the locker room. The losses keep piling up. There's more and more frustration and it's tough to get it back, I think. And I, you know, you just never know if Nate Bjorkren can do that. And then on top of that, you see Nate McMillan, of course, who was the coach. Remember he got an extension? Yeah. And then he was like fired a week later. I was like, that was weird. But you're like, okay, they're tired of losing in the playoffs in the first round all the time. You know, Nate always gets them there. They have an identity, defensive minded, play slow. But then he's gone because they want to go on to bigger and better things. So they bring in Nate Bjorkman, try and play faster and try and shoot a lot more threes, a little more modern game. But yeah, Nate now in the with the Hawks, like obviously doing really well. That team got healthier, so that helps. I get that. But yeah, they're up to the fifth seed and are knocking on the fourth seed there. So that doesn't help Bjorkman as well. But yeah. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. This is never good. I don't like his chances, really, like to sort of save this or turn it around. Mm. Because once this stuff gets out there, oh, God, that means it's really bad. Again, I think if Woj is dropping this bomb with, what are we at? Eight games to go to? The timing of this is even uh, mm. a little fascinating to me. And this is a team that's in the play-in tournament. You know, this isn't like possibly, you know, Luke Walton with the Kings. And they're I know they're trying to get in still, but they're not going to make it and stuff <laughs> like that. Like this is... This is a team that is in the mix. They've just been floundering. But there's a big a report from Shams and I think it was Sam Amick yeah, of The man. Athletic. Uh, basically going through the coaches on the hot seat, Lee. And we've done this before. And I don't think many of the names have changed from these guys that are plugged in. It's obviously Nate Bjorkren, Terry Stotts with the Portland Trailblazers, just in the sense that he's been there so long and yeah. they continue to struggle that maybe they just go with a, a new voice. Mike Budenholzer. As we've oh, said a million fun. times here on this podcast, yeah, if they lose in the first or second round or get embarrassed in a in a in a series, that he probably is the one change you're making because you're not obviously moving on from uh, really your three core guys in uh, Giannis, Chris Middleton, and Drew Holiday. And then who else did they add? King Wal- uh, sorry, King Walton, Luke Walton, <laughs> and uh, definitely not the King. And uh, and what was the, the was, uh, fifth name? I'm forgetting. Uh, was, Scotty Brooks. Thank you, yeah, Scotty part, Brooks. Yeah. Right, 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 right. I think he's but, out of contract anyway uh, as well, Scotty Brooks. He, he might have done enough to get an extension here. Who knows? But uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think Budenholzer is an obvious one. And Luke Walton, I think he's as good as gone anyway. I, I think it's very, very tough to see him staying on with the Kings next season. Uh, and Terry Stotts is almost like, almost like Scott Brooks there in OKC. It's like he's been there so long. If they don't really make a good, strong run into the playoffs, it's almost like we just need a new voice in there anyway, try to mix things up because I think that would be the first move the Blazers would make before trading potentially CJ McCollum if that's what they thought they needed to uh, to change things up a bit. All right, our next headline. This one from Shams and The Athletic. The Hornets' Miles Bridges out 10 to 14 days in health and safety protocols. Is this news? Yeah, it is because he was playing really, really well and the Hornets are in a playoff race here trying to uh, – Either, either get up to the sixth seed or obviously stay in the seventh seed there in the play-in tournament. He's only averaging 12.4 points per game, six boards per game uh, this season in his third campaign. But over the last little while, I think it was over the last six games, Lee was, was scoring you know close to 22 points per game, uh, over 20 points per game. More than the uh, you know that that benchmark that you're yeah. tired of uh, when we were talking to Seth on yesterday's podcast. But the timing of this is yeah. brutal for the Hornets because Lamelo Ball just comes back, Malik Monk comes back both from their injuries where they were out multiple weeks. And now they say goodbye to uh, Bridges, who was filling in for another injured guy in Gordon Hayward, who's been out for like basically uh, since early April, so about a month with that sprained right foot. So they're just like trying to keep their head above water. They just like, they get one guy back and then another goes out and they get him back and another goes, it just sucks for the Hornets. Yeah, that that month of April was really good there for Bridges in 16 games, averaging 19 points, seven rebounds, shooting 52% from the field and 47% 47% from three-point range. He really did step into that role and uh, and perform it well for them. So this is a blow. And also, just as we get LaMelo back, 
he and Bridges have been so great. We've got Eric Collins on the call. I mean, yeah. that that's something we're really going to miss. But uh, Eric Collins actually makes any play sound awesome anyway. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, this, this is this is tough. And uh, and you just hope, you know, like every team though as well, like we just talked about the Pacers, they're dealing with injuries to all their sort of key players at some point this season. But they are able to just hang in there. And if you look at their record, they're actually, what, a game and a half up on the Pacers themselves. So it doesn't feel like James Borrego's in any trouble at all. It feels like uh, he's done a very good job with everything that he's uh, he's had this season. So hopefully, you know, I'd like to see the Hornets get into the playoffs somehow. I don't know who that would be the expense of, but uh, it'll be fun to watch them. I think if they're healthy, uh, as with every team, you know, they're, uh, they're a chance to at least, uh, you know, compete in the playoffs. I don't think mm. they'd win a round, but um, I don't think they'd get swept either. Yeah, so this is now Bridges and what? We just had Dennis Schroeder, similar situation, right, Trey, mm -hmm. where he's out for basically the rest of the regular season is what we're getting. I, we only have two weeks left, and they're, much time. You know, it's 10 to 14 days, so we're not going to see uh, either Dennis Schroeder or Miles Bridges until possibly a playoff series. Yeah, and both teams Playing. are kind of in the same scenario right now where they're just trying to get to number six and stay at at least number six, right? And that's why, to me... It's news. It's certainly news because I'm going to miss the LaMelo to Miles Bridges highlights for sure. But as long as uh, Bridges is back in time for the play-in tournament or for the playoffs, same with Schroeder. I don't actually think this is really news. The Hornets have already exceeded expectations. They are going to be a playoff team, which I don't think a lot of people thought was going to be the case coming into this season. Already a good year. If Miles Bridges is able to get back in time and actually play in the postseason, all good. Yeah. What is the update, too, on Gordon Hayward? Like, do we know yeah, when it's... he's coming back? I know he was like, you know, going to be reevaluated. Uh, that was the last I think we heard, but that was a long time ago now. When are they reevaluating uh, Gordon Hayward? Has he got his haircut yet? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing popping out so far. It has been very quiet though. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Three days ago, he got out of his walking boot. Wow. Okay. Wow. So that Which, I mean, like doesn't it's... make it sound like he's coming uh, back right away. No. No. Okay. So uh, I guess we'll be keeping our eye on that. The Gordon Hayward situation out for a long, long time. All right. Final one. Uh, probably my favorite headline from the bunch here. But again, is this actually newsworthy? It's from SI.com. And we're showing you a photo. The headline is Suns Gorilla Mascot signs first ever mascot apparel endorsement deal. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at the grip <laughs> on this guy. Uh so Trey, get us started. Is this news? The Suns mascot just signed an a you know apparel deal, an endorsement deal. Oh come on, this is news only because it's hilarious. The picture of a gorilla <laughs> signing a contract? Are you kidding me? Uh, that's a great picture. Also the one of the gorilla doing an arena walk, just dripping <laughs> in designer. A hilarious thing. I don't know who in the world is going to be watching a gorilla mascot walk into a game and think. I got to get with that gorilla. <laughs> Give me the gorilla. Give me that gorilla glue. But shout out to the gorilla getting a bag. Uh, I think they called it an MCM bag uh, as well. Everything's coming up, Suns, this season. Their mascot just signed an endorsement deal. Yeah, and the endorsement deal is with uh, like a luxury brand, right? I guess in the area. It's not with like a particular just straight up uh, br like, um, you know, like bape or something like that. Right, or I think it's like, a, a boutique, right? Boutique, yeah, that's I guess the word I'm looking for. So he's gonna, he might have all this stuff, basically. <laughs> exactly right, exactly right. Can't wait to see what he wears next. Which is uh, actually, it's actually kind of confusing. Um, I feel like the gorilla doesn't usually wear pants, right? Like usually, usually just going with the sun's like a uh, button up, warm up look. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. What remember. do you mean, pants? So, oh, 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 okay. Yeah, he's usually yeah. just going, you know, yeah, yeah, gorilla yeah, yeah. fur out yeah, when yeah, he's yeah, jumping yeah. off a trampoline or whatever. So a little disingenuous to me if he's going to be pitching pants. I can't, yeah. oh. I can't get on board with that. If the gorilla is going to be telling me you got to get these pants and he's not wearing them himself, I don't know. Yeah, Lee, uh, what do you think about this? The gorilla signing this apparel? Well, for, deal? for me, the gorilla is the OG mascot of the NBA. Still, I think he's the one that sort of stood out the most. So I'm glad to see him getting a little bit of recognition through uh, through this. But do you think all the previous gorillas also get a cut of the? Uh, you know, they get their own shoes and stuff because there must be. I mean, I I'm guessing there's probably been four or five of them now throughout the years. Uh, I mean, he's been around since the early '80s, I think, at the gorilla. So, you know. <laughs> I wonder what the hierarchy is amongst gorillas in the uh, in the history of the uh, of the suns there. 
So hold on. Hold on. What are you asking? Are you saying all the people that have previously played the gorilla yeah. in the mascot, if they get like kickback from this boutique? Is that what you're at? Yeah. I mean, they're all part of the one gorilla family. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but I they're mean, done, man. Like they're, 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 they're retired. Gone. But I, think, well, I don't uh, think they have four or five people playing the gorilla on a rotating. No, basis. no, no, no. I'm saying over the history of the gorilla's lifespan, yeah, yeah. there has to have been because oh, I think, yeah, I mean, I I think the raptor is still the same raptor from the inception, but uh, he must be getting up there too now. Yeah, you we know, know uh, we know uh, Benny the Bull has been uh, a couple different people. Yeah, even, yeah. even since you know we've been following the mascot game closely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, what what other mascot would you like to see get a an endorsement deal? Well, to get in some AK threads, Lily. Who yeah, would you like to see? yeah. I think uh, Hugo, Hugo, and Gorilla are the two that I just sort of think are the best mascots. I mean, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! More than ours? More than what, the Raptor and Benny the Bull? Oh, well, well, Ra Raptor and the Bull are good. That is true. But I, I sort of remember Hugo when he did the um, the somersault three sixty dunk and then sat on the rim. Yeah, I remember that from like uh, I think it was an All Star weekend. Like yeah, that it was. was. They had a mascot dunk contest. <laughs> yeah. I think you can search for yeah. it. You, but I, I just remember the, those early days of the Suns. I think it was what was their um, America West Arena or whatever it was called there, and, and the gorilla coming down, going crazy. Like it was just. I mean, because there's still no connection between gorilla and Phoenix, is there? Like, like it's just <laughs> like, hey, we're just going with the mascot. Let's go with the gorilla. All right, that right. works. I think you there know, is so, a story to it that I can't recall off yeah, the top of my head, like yeah, a reason yeah. why it happened. But yeah, yeah. okay. But uh, no, I, I'm you know Benny. Benny is great. Benny is entertaining, no doubt about it. And so is the raptor. But uh, I just okay, feel so Gorilla and so Hugo that. for me are the sort of like they're just my my all time faves. I think well, Hugo's already got a Jordan deal. Yeah, though. he wears the Jordan Elevens usually. He's got a. He doesn't have to get them from a resale shop. He's getting them straight from the man himself. Um, but I love the idea that the previous gorillas have gorilla equity <laughs> yeah. and they can share in any profits that the gorilla may accrue in the future. You got That's shares. You got a fractional gorilla here. Well, I think because you're a custodian of the gorilla costume, aren't you? You don't. No one is the gorilla, so it's like. Great point. You've got such a reputation to uphold. I mean, the the OG gorilla, you know, he was going crazy. So you, the next guy has to like make it a seamless transition. So it's like they're all, you know, they're all together in the one team, the one gorilla team. But, okay, so like that's like me moving on from the podcast. Uh, you guys slotting in, I don't know, Danny Larue for crying out loud. <laughs> hey, I better see some of those Roman dick pills you've got, and you better come through with a few Felix Grey glasses for me. And uh, you know, I put the time in. I want to kick. Okay, this is what you're saying. This is what you're saying. Oh, I, I hope you're not on the hot seat now that uh, Danny Larue. <laughs> now that you're throwing Danny Larue's now. Well, no, like this is like this is my point. Sam just said in the stream team. So what's Matty O's cut of the ad read? It's like it's like this is what I'm getting at. If he does an ad read, I'm happy to sling him some product that we get. Absolutely. You can do a manscaped ad read, Matt, and I'll sling you some of the Matt and Manscaped stuff they've sent to us. Because I got tons of it. I'm more than happy to share that stuff. What else? What else have we got here? Uh, yeah, I've got a pair of Felix Grays. Matt's a uh, glasses wearer at times. You can have those. <laughs> you throw in some magic spoon while we're at it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he'd love the magic spoon. Yeah. Okay. I'm keeping my Sonos, though. That's uh, that's probably one of my favorite ones. That's incredible. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's go <laughs> seamlessly from those ad reads that weren't ad reads into the actual ad reads. Uh, JD, what do you got for us? Yeah, CBD. <laughs> it isn't uh, about what you feel. It's about what you don't feel. Stress, anxiety, pain, all the things I'm feeling these days. I'm trying to buy a house, trying to sell a house. My neck is killing me. Uh, I've got to move in a couple of weeks. I got tasks waking me up at the crack of dawn every day. <laughs> My internet sucks today. I can't keep up with you guys switching around your your cameras. And I was late on is this news? But anyways, we got this feel stuff in the mail the other day or a couple of weeks back, I guess now. And uh, completely out of the blue, unannounced CBD oil just arrives on my doorstep. Totally normal. Uh, back in the when we started this, uh, you know, we got that case of water. Um, I wouldn't touch it until I was completely knew for sure where it came from but uh, this stuff i stopped back immediately as soon as uh, I, I just read the package it said feels naturally helps reduce stress anxiety pain and sleeplessness that's it great take the dropper out immediately squirted under my tongue package also says feels works great 
Uh, sorry, works naturally to help you feel better. There's no hangover and no addiction. Uh, but you know me, I'm a skeptical guy, skeptical of everything, especially this kind of stuff. So I, I did a little bit of research and here's what mm -hmm. I found. This is from the Harvard Medical School. There is moderate evidence that CBD can help improve uh, sleep disorders, muscle spasticity related to multiple sclerosis and anxiety. Moderate evidence. You know what? I'll take it. Also, here's an anecdote. Every time I put feels under my tongue, I've slept through the night, which hmm. I never hmm. do. But is it a coincidence? Perhaps. Is it psychosomatic? Perhaps. Or I don't know. Maybe it works. You can start feeling better with Feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash no dunks and you'll get 50% off your first order with sh free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash no dunks to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash no dunks. Like all of you guys, I'm excited to tell you about a new podcast I think you're uh, actually really going to love. It's called Death at the Wing. It's a sports documentary podcast hosted by Adam McKay. Does that name sound familiar? Yeah, he's the writer and director of the big short Vice and Anchorman. 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 An Anchorman. <laughs> it's a last name. <laughs> Ron uh, Anchorman. <laughs> the 1980s basketball <laughs> saw players like Magic Johnson, Dr. J becoming household names bringing a faster, flashier style to play that captivated TV audiences. But along the way to wealth and stardom, the excess of the 80s took its toll on the next generation of basketball. And never in the history of any sport have we seen so many who are ready to become stars face tragic deaths in such a short time frame. Crazy stuff. McKay is joined by sports journalists and experts who lived through these moments in history to explore this overlooked phenomenon and the web of social, political, and cultural forces that were at play. Really, really recommend you check out Death at the Wing. If you did love The Last Dance or any of the 30 for 30 sports documentaries, which I love, I think you're going to enjoy Death at the Wing just as much. So search for Death at the Wing wherever you get your podcast to start listening. Listen to No Dunks and then listen to Death at the Wing. Okay, time for Tweet of the Night. Mm, tweet of the Night. Wow. Twitter. Okay, Tweet of the Night. It's a little weird, and it has a little bit of a backstory to it. Uh, a few days ago, I decided for, I still don't really know why, but I was going to share the ads or the graphic slash art, whatever you want to call it, that are on the top of the backboards for every single NBA arena. This is something I've just been taking screen grabs of all season long. And I finally uh, <laughs> acquired all 30 of them. And I was like, well, what am I going to do with this dumb folder now on my desktop? Hell, I'll start a Twitter thread and I'll just tweet them out. And uh, a lot of you Danny were uh, LaRue would responding. Never do that. Danny LaRue <laughs> could never dream of having <laughs> the tenacity and the commitment that someone like I do, that I that I do to have uh, to do something like that. He could sicko skis. You can't yeah. watch him with the screenshots. Come no, on, no, no. So okay, so yeah, I did this. You can go check it out. Uh, look at me up on Twitter at Je Skeets. But anyway, one of them when I was showing the Brooklyn Nets top of their backboard, I tweeted the photo of it. There it is, and I said the Brooklyn Nets with the Red Bull energy drink. Y'all think KD, Kevin Durant, knows who Max Verstappen is. Uh, obviously, F1 racer, four-team Red Bull there. Uh, in Formula One, TK and I are all into it. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know. You know, I just needed something to say with these dumb photos that I was putting in yeah. this thread. So Trey and I started talking about it again on last night's uh, Top Shot Hot Boys. It, it came up again. I got a Kevin Durant moment. You know, TK is like once again doubling down on you think KD knows. And we were like debating it. I was like, ah, I'm skeptical. Why would he know who Max Verstappen is? Like, is he an F1 racer, a fan? I've never heard him talk about it. Trey, you were like a little bit like, ah, maybe he is. Like, how do we know he's not? He was out for a while, wasn't playing basketball, maybe picked up a new sport. Maybe he's always been a fan for all we know. So I said, hey, I'm going to tweet at Kevin Durant. Let's find out. This guy responds to people. Sure. So I tweeted some point last night before I was about to go to bed. Hey, Kevin Durant at KD Trey five random question, <laughs> but do you know who Max Verstappen is? I'm asking for a friend. I was asking for that friend, Trey Kirby. Me. He responded to me because Kevin Durant is on Twitter 
Though it was a weird response. <laughs> yeah? You got a joke ready? Holy man, KD, geez, the trolls have gotten to you, man. I'm just asking you a simple question. And I just responded, no, I was just legit curious if you were an F1 fan. Trey Kirby thought you might be appreciate the response. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. I guess he is. He, or at least he knows who uh, Max Verstappen is, uh, hmm. TK. So in the end, you were right. Though my man, Kevin Durant needs a hug, man. Holy, he's just like, he, he, you know, you get on Twitter. He's like, ah, what, what do you want? What are you going to say? Why are you going to make fun of me? No, I just want to know if you were an F1 fan. Yeah, you know, it's a tough night for Kevin Durant. Took another loss to the Bucks. <laughs> He was obviously ready to throw down on Twitter last night, but I got to be honest with you, Skeets. I had a little bit of inside information here. Uh, this is a photo of me from the 2017 NBA Finals. That's me. That's Neymar. And they're in the orange jacket. That's the one and only Lewis, Lewis Hamilton, Hamilton getting yeah. ready to watch KD take the court for the Warriors uh, in the finals for the first time. This is 2017. You have to imagine perhaps they had some sort of interaction there. And then, like I was saying on the stream last night, Drive to Survive is huge, man. How can you ignore it at this point, especially if you're an internet kind of guy like Kevin Durant? Sure, True. he's had the time to check it out here and there. Still haven't heard back from him yet, though, on who he thinks is going to win the Barcelona GP this weekend. We shall see. Yeah, that's true. We got to find out how much of a fan he is. Is he actually watching qualifying? Is he into the races? Or does he just, because of Drive to Survive, know who he is? Sure. Uh, has he ever met him? That's a follow-up question. But I was afraid to tweet back at that point. I was, jeez. Oh, yeah. I can't even <laughs> yeah. ask this guy a question. This guy's yeah. all fired up. Uh, but anyway, thanks for responding again, uh, Katie. Mm. Uh, Lee, what do you think? Are, are you shocked at all that he that he knows who Max Verstappen is? No, no, because I actually, try bringing up that photo, I was going to say Lewis Hamilton's often been to the uh, NBA Finals. I think Lewis Hamilton was kind of friends with Kobe as well. So I think there's a bit of an overlap there from the mm. uh, racing world to the NBA world. So it makes uh, you know, it makes sense that at some point Kevin Durant has certainly met Lewis and, and maybe Verstappen as well. I'm not sure. But uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, we tend to think that uh, basketballs have to be tall, but for a Formula One race driver, you need to be small. So it's like really the opposite sort of for uh, Formula One drivers. You know, the smaller you are, the better it is, you know, when you get into that cockpit. So uh, <laughs> it'd be great. wouldn't it be great to see Kevin Durant in a Formula One car just That'd to see wild. how he's wow. going? <laughs> I wonder if he's driving. Yeah, or if he just puts the legs out over the side there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you <laughs> might have to. Yeah, you might have to. Uh, this is a great idea. Try and get Katie on happy hour. Yeah, we'll put there I'll, I'll tweet him back. We'll see what he says. Yeah, yeah, on happy hour. Yeah. We won't talk basketball. We're yeah, exactly. One. We exactly. will talk. We don't talk basketball on happy hour. We'll talk about everything else, Katie. If you want to come on, we'll talk about F1, NFTs. Uh, I'm sure you've had some. Uh, well, I know you've had some uh, experience with moving houses. Yeah, we get into all of that. So, yeah, come on, uh, happy hour, Katie. Open invite. Whenever you want to swing by, jump on for uh, five or ten minutes. Okay, so that was a weird tweet of the night, but uh, can't believe you responded. That was great. Pick of results from last night. It was the nets Bucks game uh, involving Kevin Durant there. I swerved. I took Milwaukee to win by two or more, and it came through. I'm 2-0 and oh for this month of May. Pick of results brought to you by BetMGM. Everybody else had the Nets thinking, uh, no. That's difficult to win these little baseball series, uh, to win both of them like the Bucks just did. So everybody had the Nets besides me. And uh, that's an L. Lee, you're 0-2 here in the month of May. $100 to charity on the line, which yeah, we're loving. It's not a bad month to lose then, is it? No, that's right. That's yeah. right. Though if you don't win in a game the entire month, you have to give $500. <laughs> that's <laughs> fine. Okay? I'm fine with that. Yeah, that would be really impressive if you yeah. just... Can't pick one correct game over two weeks. But anyway, tonight's game is your New York Knickerbockers versus the Denver Nuggets. It's in Denver. Nuggets are favored by three and a half. Let's start with Tassie here uh, on today's show. Let's see uh, who he's picking. I'll take the Knicks. I've decided I'm trying to lose so I can give some money to charity. I think the Nuggets are going to win, but I'm taking the Knicks. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> he's getting cute. Yeah, he's getting cute with it. I love it. He is taking the Knicks, though he does think the Nuggets ultimately <laughs> will cover. Uh, but Lee, where do you want to go? Well, if Tass is taking the Knicks and this is the month you want to lose, I too will take the Knicks. I'll wow. get down in the gutter there with Tassie and I'll uh I'll see if I can go. Oh, and what is it, like 15 or something? No, nah, I won't even be that much because 
I mean, it's it's what it's this week and next week, isn't that? That's is that it? Yeah, I guess is that so. all okay. that's left uh, all right. of the regular season. I think. Well, so, I'm, but... I'm, I'm going to try for the perfect month then, because I actually was going to pick the Nuggets. I thought I think they bounce back and they're at home, and the Knicks have been good, but I think this is a, a bridge too far for them. But okay, I'll take the Knicks. Sure, see if I can go one and three and uh, keep this perfect streak intact. <laughs> all right, good luck to you, uh, <laughs> TK. You want to try and pick a winner? Yep. Yeah, okay. I'm going with the Nuggets here. I think they're going to win the basketball game. I think they're going to cover the spread, and I would like to win this month, actually, just because of competitive natures. <laughs> um, I'm also going with the Denver Nuggets to cover this somewhat small spread here of three and a half. They just lost, and the Knicks are uh, playing phenomenal basketball. I think it could be a close one. It could be a one where the Denver Nuggets win the game but don't cover, but I'm with TK. I'll go Denver to win by four or more, and we got Lee and Tassie taking the Knicks, though – they're doing it to sort of tank here. It's very strange, <laughs> but uh, I love it. I love it. All right, guys, we'll call it there. Thank you so much for joining us here in the stream team. If you came through live, like, comment, and subscribe to No Dunks on YouTube. Email us your NBA questions and comments for the next Beach Step and Podcast. We are hitting the beach later today here on Wednesday, so you can join us live on YouTube at 3 p.m. Eastern. Grab your No Dunks merch, like the shirt I'm wearing, the shirt Lily's wearing there. He's got the Good Morning uh, Sweet World shirt. You can get that over at nodunks.com. And subscribe to The Athletic. Go to theathletic.com slash nodunks. I will say this. Tomorrow, our daily show, we're going to start a little bit later. It's going to be an 11 a.m. Eastern start. And the reason why is we're going to have one West Coast guy, so we wanted to give him a little bit more time in the morning. The Washington Post, Ben Golliver, is going to join the podcast to talk about his new book. Bubble ball inside the NBA's fight to save a season. He's just going to come on the entire show. You know, Ben knows his stuff. He does like a million podcasts. He knows every team in the league, every player. So we'll just have him on and uh, we'll talk to him about his book and his writing process and all that. But we'll probably just talk a bunch of NBA and all the games on tonight. So that's tomorrow with Ben Golliver at 11 a.m. Eastern. That's on Thursday. But we'll see you later for that Beach Steppin' podcast. I saw your tweet, Skeets. You said we were also going to be able to talk Lego with him because I remember he had like a Lego Lamborghini he brought yeah, into right. the bubble. I've been uh, building a couple of Lego things here recently. Threw together this Thanos you see over uh, my shoulder here. Did mm. an Octopod with the girls not too long ago. So right, let's see that. Uh, I'm excited. Cool yeah, yeah. Like, look at my guy. Look at my guy, Thanos. My oh, guy, wow. Thanos. He's got the... In uh, yeah. Sorry, give him a little Richard Jefferson here. <laughs> <laughs> Got the gauntlet here. Uh, he's technically wearing his mech armor. I don't know what that is, but uh, love having my guy Thanos around. Can't talk. Can't wait to talk blocks with Ben. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got to yeah. bring a few too. I got some yeah, here. I great got Lego some, talk. Uh, yeah. Okay, there'll be a lot Lego of Lego pod. talk. Yeah. If you have questions for Ben Golliver uh, about Lego or the book that he just wrote or about the NBA, you know, drop them in the YouTube comments below. Tweet them in at No Dunk Sync. But we'll be back for a beach step in later today. And then we got Tass is what you need to know in the morning on Thursday. And then that 11 a.m. Eastern start with Ben Golliver on Thursday. All right, Clipper Bros. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, don't actually have a quote. Skeets, you got a joke ready? <laughs> no. uh, thanks for, for stopping by. <laughs> Brace the day, people. You